Welcome to Resurrection Vlog. This is something that I have been planning to do for quite some time with this dead GTX 780 Ti. You see, nothing, nada, dead, no signal, boom, done. But had my hand forced a little bit by the death of the Intel 750 Series SSD in Personal Rig Update 2015. Yes, my friends, while I was affixing this lovely EK water block, or more likely while I was removing the stock heat sink, the 750 series SSD died. So we are gonna use a tried and true, well, a definitely tried and hopefully true method of bringing it back to life. The Mastercase 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. All right, so I know technically you're not supposed to run it with no heat sink. No, that is not how it died. I am only running it for a couple seconds to demonstrate that it is in fact not working um, before we get started here. This is a lot faster than putting the stock heat sink back on it uh, since I'm going to have to remove that to attempt my resurrection anyway. NVMe configuration, nothing. Also, this monitor does that sometimes. Boom. Dead drive. Here we go. So the science behind this resurrection method is actually fairly simple. Whether due to uh, heating and cooling, therefore expanding and contracting, or some other type of physical stress, the theory is that some of the solder joints on the board between the chips and the PCB could have become broken over time. And by heating up the component to the melting temperature of that solder, you could allow it to reflow and reconnect, becoming fully functional again. But before we get into all the stuff you'll need to perform this particular little miracle, I want to start with a hefty disclaimer. This will void the crap out of any warranty you may still have. So if your product is covered by the retailer or manufacturer warranty, do not do this. Instead, go through the proper warranty channels. In my case, both my video card and my SSD are review samples with therefore no warranty coverage whatsoever. So we have pretty much nothing to lose at this point, except our time. And if you're gonna watch this video, I guess yours as well. So let's run through what we got here. We have ourselves a Wolfgang Puck oven that was generously donated by Luke to Linus Media Group because Linus Media Group's employees made it so filthy and disgusting that he pretty much doesn't want it anymore. So I'll be cleaning this out uh, before trying to repair any video cards in it. It's important to use an oven that can reach 385 degrees Fahrenheit and that you never intend to cook food in ever again because as the guide that I'm following on Overclockers from like 2009 pointed out, if you are reheating stuff like this in an oven, there can be um, gases and materials let off that can contaminate future food that you cook inside it. The next thing we'll need is screwdrivers for taking apart our components. Our SSD is conveniently already disassembled, but the video card will need its heatsink removed. Then we will need aluminum foil. This will be to wrap the oven tray as well as to uh, separate the PCB from the oven tray. We'll show you guys how to do this later on. And we will need some replacement thermal compound for our hardware for when we reassemble it, assuming that it survives the baking process. All right. So let's get to cleaning then. Ew. Oh, that's gross. Why didn't we have a hose? Uh, cause Yvonne wouldn't let us get one. Ed asked why we don't have a hose. See, she doesn't deny it. That's why, isn't it? I wanted a hose. I also wanted like a utility sink out there. Why did they get the large ones? It's like whoever bought these forgot that I work here. I'm swimming in there. New one for that, and I take the old one. Here's a funny idea. Anyone who leaves their dishes in the sink unwashed, I'll wash it with this. Look at that, it's like wearing right through the uh, scouring pad. Yeah, I've never used it either. 
I suspect Brandon and Taryn. You look at this one. There's like a hanger in here. Ew! Gotta be cheese. Yuck. Ah, uh, okay, so this is a really short cord, but that's okay because that's why extension cords exist. I'm not a huge fan of run, running like an oven off an extension cord. But Uh, okay, here we go. Standard bake, convection, bake, slow cook, roast, broil, rotisserie. Let's do standard bake. Temperature, 385 or 375? Does it make a sound when it reaches the... I would think so. Should go beep, beep, beep. So we can use the time while our oven is preheating to strip down our video card. That definitely stinks. That is gross. Oh. Kind of smells like cancer. Yeah, it smells like an oven that hasn't been turned on in a year and that was disgusting the last time it was turned on. Now this is one key difference between stripping down a card for water cooling, for example, and stripping down a card for baking is that you're actually going to want to remove as many of the plastic housings on things like fan or LED connectors as you can. Make sure you note the orientation as you pull them off, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time putting them back together. Don't try to take off stuff like the PCI Express power connector housings. Uh, those will survive the bake just fine. Oh, shoot. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, wow. Oh, that smoke. That is so gross. Okay, well, I have to pull the tray out because you're supposed to wrap it. Okay. Damn it. Oh, weird. It's like curling. Can you, can you not do that, Mr. Tray? Thank you. So this, yep, yeah, this is cool enough now. So let's wrap this baby up. Now the guy doesn't say shiny side out or shiny side in but that looks like the shiny side out. It's amazing how, how many like non-baking people will not realize that aluminum has a reflective side and a matte side for not reflecting as much. Yep, you learn something every day. Every day that you watch this show, which should be every day. You have videos every day. Now the next step is to create little aluminum balls. Just like that. We're gonna use these to keep the PCB of our SSD or graphics card off of the tray itself. It's important not to position them on top of one of the components that we want to re-solder. So you want this just touching the bare PCB, which might make it a little tricky. Just be careful and go slow. I think this side is probably my best bet. But then this is probably the side I think was most likely damaged by removing it. So maybe I want, hmm. Okay, so if I went like this, I kinda wish I had smaller balls, aluminum balls. So let's make sure we're not making contact with anything we shouldn't be, any surface mount components or anything like that. It looks like we're good. It's at 385, standard bake. Okay. Let's get baked. Ah. Okay, timer. Start, start, start timer. I don't know. Well, okay, it's 4.33, so at 4.41 we pull it out. And hope for the best. You should never just pull it out and hope for the best. That's why you only need one glove, because it can do up to five at a time. Although that might be a bit of a bottleneck. I'm pretty sure it's working. It's hot. Gentle now. Okay, this is a terrible, terrible situation because... Oh no, wait, wait, no, maybe it's okay. Uh, okay, I need it to come out a little bit further. I don't want it to shift on those balls though. Here we go. I gotta be dexterous with this glove. 
Okay. Now, we let it cool to room temperature. Um, it's very cold in here. Maybe I'll cool it to room temperature near the oven. Um, or on top of the oven. Or, well, okay. That seems like a bad idea. Yeah, I don't want to put it down. I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to hold it the whole time. Okay, well, I want to start baking the video card here at some point. Can you reuse the walls? Yeah. No, it's okay. I'll just hold it, actually. I think I can probably, I can probably do this without... Yeah, there's like nothing on it here, so I'll just put one there. Ew! Ow! Ew! Okay. <laughs> it's all terrible. I had the gloved hand. It's okay. I forgive you. All right. Okay, so the video card is done now, too. It's definitely warm. Ouch. Um, I'm just gonna put this here for now. And let's try the SSD. Come on. Well, there's lights on on it. I don't remember if it had those before. Oh, I don't see it in the boot priority thing. I don't know if it worked. Crap. Well, I guess I might as well try baking it one more time. Don't have anything to lose. Maybe I'll try flipping it the other way this time. The black, like, under part of the sticker is still there. It's, like, sticky, but the barcode is completely gone. By contrast, our sticker that we put on it is just fine. <laughs> it's not the outcome I wanted, but if the GTX 780 Ti works, then at least this is for something, because I can use this for a new render server concept that I have that I'll be building out pretty soon. With that said, I'm not going to count my chickens at this stage in the game anyway, but let's see how it goes. Come on, baby. Let's get something out of this exercise. I'm pretty sure we should have a display by now. Wait, wait. Hey, all right. So the video card is back from the dead. Rock on. That's fantastic. All right, let's take another crack at the SSD then. Oh crap, I don't know how long this has been done. Well, what are we gonna do, kill it more at this point? Shut up, Brandon. <laughs> oh wow, we overcooked it. It looks Is dark. It I can't tell. I thought I saw steam rising. Oh, you know what it's probably from? I actually, oh my goodness, ow, ow, my fingers. <laughs> No, I, I think the steam is like, I accidentally spat a bit. And I think it like, well, okay, I'm not trying to just spit all of it. Just, just shut up. Everyone just shut up. <laughs> One of the tricky things is that different boards will use different soldering techniques and different solder materials. So just because something works well on a graphics card made by Nvidia doesn't mean that it works well on an SSD made by Intel. Unfortunately, I don't have like special guidelines for 750 series SSDs. Oh, well you should use this temperature for this long. So we just have to kind of hope for the best here. The good news is our 780 Ti is running the Heaven benchmark with no issues whatsoever. So yeah, let's take another crack at it, eh? Speaking of which, mass drop. If you guys haven't heard of mass drop, well, I'm sorry that you live in a hole because it is pretty freaking cool. All you gotta do is head over to massdrop.com, sign up, and they've got all kinds of great deals, whether it's on audio products or like, you know, cool knives or keyboards or computer parts or whatever. I mean, they've got, they've got like a bunch of camping stuff now, like ultralight stuff. Um, super cool. And basically the way that it works is they rely heavily on their community to find them the products that they really want to buy and that they're interested in. And then MassDrop works directly with the manufacturers or authorized distributors to get genuine products at a discounted price. So the more people commit to buy, the lower the drop price goes and the better the deal is for everyone. Today we're featuring the Rocket Tie-On, a customizable 
flexible gaming mouse with 14 programmable buttons. It also features their easy shift key, which allows you to assign a secondary function to each of those buttons, as well as an 8200 DPI laser sensor, a 1000 hertz pulling rate, it can handle up to 30 G's of acceleration with no angle snapping or prediction, and it can do up to 16.8 million RGB LED lit colors in two independent zones around the outside and on the scroll wheel of the mouse. So all you gotta do is check it out at the link in the video description and get signed up for Mass Drop today. All right. Well, 50-50 ain't bad, right? So guys, if you disliked this video, hit the dislike button, rub some more salt in the wound. Thank you, I appreciate that. But if you like this video, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe even consider supporting us by buying a cool shirt like this one, changing your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code, which you can find the instructions for which I'm how to do up there, or even consider supporting us directly through our community forum. You get a cool little contributor badge. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, ooh, what should I watch next? Maybe you can check out the video where we buy a computer at Best Buy to find out just how bad of a gaming PC you will get if you do that. Check that out up at the link in the top as well.